cycle of violence has certainly plagued these rappers' lives. On June 8th, Bloodhound Old Jeff was gunned down while sliding on his ops on the 6600 block of South Roads Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. Exactly. Right. A moment later on July 8th, Wolf 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 was so come with me to Chicago and get a first-hand yeah, look inside the lives of these rising drill artists and watch as I document the 48 hours the, uh, the uh, 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 60 uh, 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 cameraman with a bullet lodged in his neck. All right, you guys, right now we're live and direct in Chicago with the one Oh, shout out. I'm tripping. I'm over talking too much. He said... I think it's sad. All about my money, get my pocket, come my uh, Higher than a bitch, I'm off the oil, they don't get it. Uh, running up my money, I'm getting my money, I'm talking my chicken. Huh? That bitch be talking that shit, but whole time told that bitch to listen. Huh? Running up this shit, but whole time ain't no competition. Huh? What the fuck is cracking, chat? What the fuck is cracking? Supporters, viewers, clickers, likers, commenters. All that good shit, man, you know what I'm saying? We actually been on our content creating shit way more heavier, way more dedicatingly type shit. Look at us. Hey, no, but it's your boy, Mr. Sitchy in the VIP, no cap. You know, we ain't with all of that trying to sound like somebody. We not as you know, get. We don't be trying to cousin none in the first couple of minutes, neither. I ain't gonna lie. We still be on that, bro. But I just, the last few years, I low cap been saying, F it. No cap. But the first three to five minutes of your vid, you're not really supposed to be trying to say no cuss words. You're not trying to cuss at all. Then after that, you're cool. That's why when you watch a lot of people's videos within like the first three to five minutes, like if you watch Duke Dennis and them stuff, when the chat's showing it, it'll be blurred for like the first few minutes and then it just starts showing it. Because that's what it is. Like all that, prof that's a lot. Of, it could be a lot of potential profanity and a lot of stuff in the chat and stuff that could be like rendered and captured by the screen when it sits there and runs your shit through the motherfucking generation, uh, uh, AI generation or whatever, and scan your video for all types of little shit or whatever. Yeah, that shit, whatever. So, you see, I'm... Yeah, but... I'll be cool, bro, but I'm really on that trying to really get my stuff monetized. I've been doing this too long, bro. We only got 240... I lost a subscriber. I was at 245, now I'm at 244. Somebody don't fuck with me, yeah. That or somebody deleted the account. I'm going to try to be positive and say someone deleted this shit. Or deactivated the account. Or something. Otherwise, someone just straight said, nigga, I'm done. You boring as hell. I'm not from What did I follow you for? And it's cool. It's cool. Because shit, my content ain't for everybody. Everybody content ain't for everybody. I watch a lot of shit. And I be like, y'all follow these people? And y'all been following for years, bro. This shit boring as hell. Why do I care about this motherfucker going and buying and drinking some tea? And then going shopping trying to figure out what fucking diamond they finna put in their ring. Or some dumb shit, like, you know, stupid shit, like, why do I care about that? I don't. But then I watch niggas like Phantom. I got my dog watching Phantom in the living room right now. Fucking, I be watching fucking Kai. You feel me? Duke. Everything. The ouch. I be watching everybody. Agent. Oh, bro. I be supporting all the AMP members and shit like that. I finna start watching Rakai. I be watching Ray too already. But, you know, like, anybody really come through, I finna start watching Talil a little more, like... All of them, if dads start streaming for real and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? The Punga start really streaming and doing it. I start watching both of them boys too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I support the, like, the whole AMP movement. And they ain't even AMP. They just call it boys. So, I just like, but still, anything surrounded with AMP where it's, like, real, you know, I fucks with it. I ain't gonna lie. Not saying that every person is probably, like, the best person, but still, I fucks with it. Like, you know, for most parts. But, let's get into this fucking video, man. We finna sit here, we finna roll some weed. Y'all already know the routine, man. Y'all know if y'all see me sitting here, we not finna not smoke. Shout out my motherfucking family, man. No cap. But this is an old ass pack. They gave me this weed a long time ago. This is not the weed in the pack, but I'm saying like when he gave me this motherfucker with that shit was like two months ago. I just be keeping shit, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, um, so if you know, you know, like a month or two ago, right? Brandon Buckingham, I went to Chicago. I was in Chicago with, with Skrilla. If y'all last know who Skrilla is, you feel me? Not Skrilla, baby. Yeah. And not Kodak Skrilla, the song, because a lot of people be slow. Yeah. But Skrilla, from Philly, from Kensington, to be exact, from Zombieland. Zombieland Skrilla, to be exact, exact. Zombieland Skrilla, y'all. So, um, it was him. I think he was with, can't be exact, but I think he was with Q50. Uh, you know, that, that 
association group, you know what I'm saying? Whoever is associated with Q50, like Bloodhounds and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So, I think he was with, like, them and shit, and pretty much what happened was, like, it ain't had shit to do with Skrilla. It was more so on some, like, the low damn near was given, gotten, found out or something by the niggas' actual ops, and I just took it as that shit could have happened at any moment, at any day, rather Skrilla was there or not, that shit could have happened, rather Brandon was there or not, could have happened, but... Somebody dumb as hell and they posted the low. They was trying to uh clown Brandon because they like, yeah, this white boy gonna get himself killed trying to do this on the third and do these hood vlogs and instantly uh leech off the black community and whoop through our bandwagon. Like how what how the fuck do you leech off somebody who reaches out to you and says, hey bro, can you come to our uh can you come do a documentary in our hood? If you ever uh willing to, could you come to our hood? And can we come get on camera and chop it up and kind of say how we be living and shit like that? How the fuck is it this person for it if he'd be like, you know what, yeah, man, I need an opportunity. Why not? You know what I'm saying? It's not his fault, especially if you were the first person to hit him up that he sees from that side of that city. And then you're the person that luckily he gets acquainted with. Because now anybody who's not acquainted with you, if you genuine and you smart, you're not going to acquaint yourself with them. So. Nobody had the opportunity and nobody was going to have the opportunity to do these Brandon Buckingham, Buckingham, oh my God, Brandon Buckingham hood vlogs out of Philly if you were not connected to Skrilla in a positive way. There was no way. You feel me? So all the different, you know, because there's, there's two groups of clappers and different stuff. And I don't want to get into that, uh, them politics. I hate getting into other state politics because, nigga, I'm not from there. You know, I don't know how YouTubers really I give it to y'all, but I, I could never really get on here and try to get into other state politics and shit like that. Like, I could get in here and try to, like, make some sh sense of some shit in a general way, but I won't try to get on here and try to break down exact, uh, exact motherfucking literal, what the fuck is the word I'm looking for, bro? Exact, literal, um, direct. Politics, you feel me? Like, I wouldn't do that, bro. I'm not from there. So, for me to try to get on here and do some direct explaining and shit, like, nah, bro. That's why motherfuckers be pressing trap lord when he's like, bro, it's all public information. It's public, but who the fuck is going, who's going to look for this shit, bro, for to try to piece it all together to this down the third? If it wasn't for YouTubers like you, I wouldn't even know this shit. And I'm being a buck. And I'm probably related to these niggas and all type of shit. Real shit. I, nigga, I know some of these niggas' real blood cousins up here. I live up here <laughs> on my dad, nigga. Tay Savage and them and all of that shit, nigga. I know I'm cool with some of his people, his cousins and nigga, or they like my family, bro. No bullshit up here. No cap. That's not no clout. That's not no clout, uh, clout searching or none of that. I ain't trying to want no clout from nothing. I don't want to be acquainted to nobody because I'm myself, nigga. On me. You don't really, you will go outside and you nine times out of ten gonna see me by myself or with my girl, gang. No cap. I don't move with crowds. I don't move with niggas. None of that shit like I used to, young niggas shit. A lot of these niggas be soft as hell. They can't move without their groups of homies and shit. Whatever. But, yeah, so you know they went out there. This is a long ass intro. It's supposed to be a fucking intro. But, oh, well, videos can be as long as you want them to be. I'm happy that I actually started setting out tone where I did. I stopped giving a fuck about my shit was 15 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes. I'm going just to edit it. That be irritating as hell. But most of the time, I don't even got to edit unless it's a distraction. These, I don't chop them out of shit. You're going to have to hear me swallow Burp, uh, uh, uh. sneeze. You might hear me fart. No cap. I be cutting those out. I ain't gonna lie. Um, unless it's a silent one, though. Them bitches for sure be in there. Y'all just don't be knowing. <laughs> Gotta keep it real with y'all. You feel me? All my people, gang. I love y'all. Without no y'all, there ain't no me. You feel me? I can't say without no me, there's no y'all because y'all has to be on somebody else's channel watching their shit anyway. So, without y'all, there is no me for show, bro. So, I really appreciate y'all. You feel me? But, um, so, they went to Chicago. It was supposed to be a hood vlog. You know what I'm saying? Boom, boom, boom. Shootout happened. Studio session got shot up. Supposedly, one of uh, Brandon's cameraman got shot. Brandon got grazed. And somebody else got hit. You feel me? So, it was like three people that supposedly got hit. But, yes, it wasn't Skrilla. Skrillaz was performing that same week in fucking Chicago, if I'm not tweaking or somewhere, but he was performing. Like, Lily on stage performing, giving a whole show of some old shit. Somewhere, uh, it probably wasn't Chicago, but he was giving a show, for sure. Boom. Brandon, he just kind of, he dropped one video, and it was a reaction video to Academics. 
treating the fuck out of academics. Which we all know, bro. Everybody treats the fuck out of academics. And this ain't a shade. This not a shot at Brandon. This is me saying like, bro, academics really do need to shut the fuck up. Man. Like when it comes to motherfuckers talking about some top streamers and this kind of third, they shouldn't even have him in a potential category for no top streamer. Cause one, the nigga gets on there, then be like, tune in, hurry up. I'm not going to be on here for a long time. Knowing he's going to be on that bitch for eight hours. It's at least four of them bitches. You feel me? But he be sitting there acting like he not going to be on the what you call for a long time or whatever. Shit be irritating the fuck out of me just to sit there and gossip. You feel me? He don't be giving opinions. He be trying to speak opinions like they factual based off of all the information he got gathered. This is why what I'm saying is facts. Just saying. And it don't be facts. It just he has enough shit to support him so much on his dick riding and how he dick rides. And he be pulling. I don't say glaze. You feel me? Motherfuckers be pulling. He pulling, gang. Like he's a puller. You feel me? He got to stop tugging and pulling, gang. He pulling on other niggas, bro. You feel me? So the, all his pulling and tugging he be doing, it just helps him. You feel me? He has all this information and other shit. He has real heart-to-heart -heart connections with niggas on the low. Rather they know it or not, he be genuinely really be like, oh, bro, I really love and support you like this much, man. I'm on your side and your side only. Yeah. Drake, I ain't got nothing to do with color. This ain't got nothing to do with color, but also realistic shit, gang. Everybody knows brown skin versus light skin, gang. On some, like, just to make it funny, but you know competitive shit. You feel me? Just like, it was like, it was really like the real, like, debate between Curry and Dame was damn near brown skin versus light skin for real. Because be real, nigga, they both is some fucking shooters. Curry is the greatest shooter, though. How the fuck is we gonna try to compare a Dame to a Curry when Curry is already said to be said the greatest shooter ever? Not, he is not the greatest scorer, just the greatest shooter ever. But then he was being compa compared to Dame. Dame was being compared to him. It was like a light skin, dark skin debate, whatever, right? More so, because be realistic. The realisticness speaks, nigga. The stats speak. He Dane wasn't even close to Curry, but that that comparison was there, right? Okay, then. So same sense of some shit like whatever the fuck I'm trying to say right here with this whole situation, though. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. So to sum up this fucking intro, man. Brandon has finally made a video. Just dropped it. Four days ago, so, you know, we ain't too late, you know what I'm saying? We, like, 96 hours late, but, you know, that's cool. Um, It's titled, I Almost Died in Chicago, Inside the Bloodhounds with Q50, Vert, and JB Ben Laden. 16 minute and 53 second video. Let's get my screen recording ready. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I need the full, I need the full screen this bitch just real quick, and then... Get that shit ready. This is the area that I want. On oh, the area only. And y'all ready, chat? I'm finna get this finish twisting this blunt up and shit. So this video for sure gonna be like 30 minutes, I ain't gonna cap, but let's start the screen recording. That's how I almost died in Chicago. They shot the white boy. Buckingham. A mass shooting on Chicago's northwest side sent four people to the hospital. They shot the white boy. Shot. This does appear to have been an ambush of some sort. They shot the white boy. This morning, all of a sudden, I, I woke up and heard gunshots. At 2.24 a.m. outside a recording studio in Chicago, Illinois, six gunmen hopped out firing over 60 rounds towards me at close range, nearly killing me. But before we get into all that, why was I there in the first place? Rappers Bloodhound Lil Jeff, Lil Scoon, Vert, and Q50 have undeniably been some of the fastest rising stars in the 2024 drill scene. Entire documentaries have been made online alleging that Jeff had killed 11 people and that Q50 had killed 8. Regardless of the validity of these claims, the cycle of violence has certainly plagued these rappers' lives. On June 8th, Bloodhound Lil Jeff was gunned down while sliding on his on the 6600 block of South Roads Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. One month later, on July 8th, mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. shot mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. I can't believe I ain't on this man. Oh, my mama. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm mad as hell. I got on to a minute's late. I got on to a minute's late. I got on to a minute's late. So come with me to Chicago and get a first-hand mm -hmm. look inside the lives of these rising drill artists and watch as I document the 48 hours leading up to the moment 60 bullets were fired by a sleeping white cameraman with a bullet lodged in his neck. All right, you guys. Right now, we're live and direct in Chicago. Go with the oh, shit, hold on. I'm tripping. I'm over talking too much. He said... That nigga said... Are right, you guys right now? No, no, no. Fired at us. Leaving my cameraman with a bullet lodged in his neck. Are right, you guys right now? We're live and direct in Chicago with the one only... <laughs> 
Vert. See, I told y'all. We're in uh, a little Airbnb right now. So, uh, Chicago. Oops. I wanted to get this 10 person Airbnb to take Vert and his friends out of the hood and have a few days to kick back in a safe luxury townhome. But we still visited Vert's notorious hood called Drill City to see what life is like there. We're in the wreck. We're out in the fucking wreck. I don't know how we come in here in traffic with a whole lot of. Brr, 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 I wish, but I can't do that because that shit fed her all. We really out here with my nigga Brandon, man. You know how the fuck we rockin', man. It's my twin flame, man. We in the trenches right now, like the hardest. Like, we in this shit right now. It's emotional. We in this shit right now. Right, right. As you, as when you watch this, realize we really in this shit as we speaking type shit. And take your videos from. Right, right now. So I'm tired of this shit, so we right here. We on the off shit right now, y'all. Told you. The off block right now? Yeah, don't think you going straight. We don't fuck with them over here. Drill City is infamous for its ongoing feud with Trap City, a hood that they used to be out with. That's this nigga's in an Uber, or in right a car in a shite So from, from down on my block right here, it's gonna be old I could not live like this, though, bro. I don't know so how niggas would be. Get be. Hear you wake up and want to be an unlocked character shit. every day, bro. Yeah, like, no, bro. The unlocked character don't even want to be them. They want to be unlocked. I mean, a lot character. Come on, let's jump. Come on, let's go. That's how we know, you know? Our community ain't that bad. You see, you come play basketball, do anything out here. It ain't not too bad. I think there's good opportunities for the youth out here to play sports and stuff. For sure, they just gotta wanna do it. Take it out, let me go, take it out, come here. Yeah, this is where I grew up from. This is really where everything where I'm from, man. Our neighborhood ain't that bad. You know, the kids love it, man. You wanna say anything to the people out there? My name is Calvin. Just know I like that. Tell us about this area. This is a fun place, bro. Like, if you don't like Grand Crossing, you a hater. You a hater? <laughs> Like what do you mean you like that? Great. This is our ops part too, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, yeah, bro, too. what? But this is our shit, though. What do you mean? Part, yeah. I'm in my real neighborhood with my brother. Drill City said What does he mean, gang? And I just want to let you know, I'm like that. I hope you talking about it in sports, little brother. Because this is already, that was a, that's a bad start right there. Like, that just proves the point of the video. Or, like, not the point of this video. Just like, the point of like, what the fuck be explained and asked to these motherfuckers when people be talking to them about the community? Like, do y'all think, like, this shit influences the kids heavily who do our them? And it's like, I mean, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, because, like, we who they look up to, just like, nigga, when we was their age, the motherfuckers that was on our block is who we was looking up to, and so we seeing them with guns, money, drugs, bitches, hoes, cars. We, what, we like, man... Everybody love them, fuck with them, it seem like, you know what I'm saying? They don't got no issues, no problems with nobody, nothing, you know what I'm saying? Unless it's a hating ass, envious ass nigga, but other than that, though, everybody love the niggas. The money getting niggas. The niggas with the drugs, the money, the bitches, the cars, the clothes, everything. Like, everybody seem to love them niggas. So us, we sit here like, man, we gonna grow up and try to be like them niggas somehow, somewhere, get some money, at least shit, and it's just... Pass down and pass down and pass down. You are you become what you see. So we see drug dealing. Ain't familiar with, with what the fuck it is at first, but as we get older and we keep seeing it, your mind just starts becoming naturally understanding because it starts slowly getting explained to you bits and pieces. You start seeing, you start catching signs. You might walk into a crib and see one of your people nodding, high or some shit, anything. And it's like you start it start raising real awareness instead of like just question. It's like, man, fuck the question. The awareness is there's something going on. Because every time he come over after so-and-so whoop through our bam, my mom sending this bitch or my dad sending this bitch not, not answering and not saying shit for an hour. Nigga high and sale in this bitch. Tweaking and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, bro, you gotta really try to leave for these kids because shit like that is really what the it's, that's what they keep track of, bro. Like, the shit y'all saying, what they hear y'all doing and saying, so they feel like they gotta come up and do that. That shit is crazy. I know that nigga said, I just wanna try to, just wanna let y'all know I'm like that. Like, bro, in sports, right? Sports, it's right? It's right shooting the ball, shit, not. Bro, you feel me? Right? Because, come on, little brother. <laughs> I'm not mistaken, you're the one that actually influenced Lil Jeff to hop into the studio and rap for the first time? Yeah, I had, I had told Blue, like, he said, y'all want to rap, but he don't know, he don't know what to say, so I just told him, good, and I just kind of helped him. 
from there it went up. Do you have any advice for up and coming uh, young artists that are trying to make a name for themselves? Like I always say, folks, just keep going. Don't stop. Don't give up. Even when you fight, it ain't working. Just keep going. Cause what if you get rich the next day? You know, what if other people are looking for you next day? Just don't give up. Keep going. I would say one time, just keep going. Next, we talk to Q50, one of the fastest rising artists of 2024, who has a reputation that precedes him. Only four months into starting his own solo career, he has nearly 10 music videos with over a million views, multiple of which have trended on YouTube. So we're here with the one and only Q50, bro. How you feeling? I'm cool. I'm like, come on, Bersky. That's really funny, though, because, like, I just shot a video. Some like, niggas just, a just don't. This little feature. Is there some stuff some really niggas cool don't rap. Like, uh, shit. You getting rich? Fuck a nigga bitch. Say I don't it. think. It's okay, bro. This is what I mean. Motherfuckers just want to get rich, bro. Do this shit for me. Q50 in a fucking rapper game. Nigga, you, you want to shoot people and kill people. You literally said it, man. <laughs> it's a whole interview, nigga. Him and Jeff sitting there. He like, nigga, I don't want to rap, nigga. I'm tell him to do that shit. You rap. Nigga, we, pr we protect you and look out for you. And be on the block and shit and get rich. Nigga, but you rap. You for sure rap. But nigga, I'm not rapping. Like, nah, I'm trying to I'm trying to whack a nigga for playing with you or something. Like, you feel me type shit, but I don't wanna rap. That's what the fuck Q50 was on. Why? So this is what I'm saying, why I say niggas ain't rappers. He ain't a rapper. The nigga all he all of most of them, bro, Chicago is not filled with rappers, bro. They filled with niggas who are turning, explaining their anger into, I mean, their emotions and explaining their fucking problems and beef. Like, hold on, I'm saying shit dumb as hell. They're turning explanations of beef and anger into mute, into lyrics. You know what I'm saying? But it's really, nigga, they could talk that shit to you. The shit that they say, like, bro, I was literally, bro, listening to Screwly G. That's one of the, um, one of his acquaintances and shit that fuck with him, but bro from Indiana and shit. Listening to Screwly, bro. Damn, what the fuck was I finna say? Uh, oh, Screwly probably really a rapper. But if you listen to Screwly the way that he rap, bro, I think more so like the nigga might be a driller. You know what I'm saying, gang? Like, and I ain't trying to put no police shit on him. No, 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 no. So fuck that, fuck that. But I'm just saying, like, the statement is like, Bloodhound, Lil Jeff, right? He wanted to obviously rap. He wanted to rap. He ain't know what to say. He can't act like he ain't care about it. That was just his demeanor. That was his everyday demeanor. Part of his demeanor was acting like he ain't give a fuck about shit. Nothing. Music, fucking nothing. If it wasn't catching a body, he didn't care about shit. That was a part of his everyday demeanor. He had to wake up and carry that in his body, his face. And he light skin as hell. And the nigga probably weighed 120 pounds. No bullshit, bro. When they showed that video of him walking up to the car doing that imitation of how somebody died... At the gas station or whatever the fuck. Bro, that nigga was built like your little sister when she first started getting her height and started getting her lit, like, start actually going into her legs and shit. That's how Jeff looked. Like, dead ass. The little brother who just literally dead ass started to grow into his body and shit. Now nerves and shit. He looked like a little brother. Just a little bro. You feel me? But they was young. Dead ass. So. It is crazy though. I have to just empty pause this and say this real quick because I'm like, bro, Q50 ain't a rapper. He don't want to be a rapper. He just raps what the fuck is really going on around him and what you feel me? That's why they like these Chicago niggas is dumb because most of them ain't rappers, bro. They just niggas filled with anger who want to come at they ops because they ops coming at them or even before they come at them, they want to come at them before they can come at them first. All types of shit, bro. So then they get on the beat. John John is look. John John know a little pussy. You already know. A little nigga just ran yesterday. Caught the little nigga in the back shot. What the fuck? I mean, caught the little nigga on the back block. What the fuck you saying? Hit a nigga right with a K. Shot a nigga in his neck, back, leg, 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 in his face. Yeah, nigga, that's seven, eight shots, nigga. He done caught it from the K. Motherfucker sit there. Police run that shit back. I'm like, and did that kid get shot about seven, eight times? And they were five, five, six, seven, six, two bullets on Sons. Oh, maybe we should listen to this a little bit more in depth. Maybe, maybe we're getting something. You feel me? So, yeah, I don't think this man's a rapper. I'm not saying he can't rap. But him and Lil Jeff's delivery on the rapping is just, to me, bro, it wasn't that. Lil Schoon was a rapper. Like, I feel like Lil Schoon was more so a rapper. 
more so than a street nigga. He was a street nigga, but Lil Jeff was a, I want to clap your ass and kill you. You feel me? Lil Skoon was like a, I'm trying to get bitches, get money, get rich off this rap shit. And boom, Lil Jeff like shit, I'm trying to come outside and shoot you in your shit and kill you, then go rap about it. But see, 250 just explains that that fast for me, bro. I really be speaking. That's why I be having to talk talk. Back to the episode. Dude, you got something crazy going on, bro. I dropped so many videos on YouTube and I've never trended. Once you're trending, back to back to back trending. Now, nah, your shit be going up, though. I'm not no cocky ass nigga, for, but I've been seeing a lot of niggas like DMing me trying to get their way back up. And I'll be seeing one for like who fell out if they come DMing me. Let's do that. <coughs> no. But you can be as lit as possible, but if you don't like, you don't keep dropping all yeah, the time. It's a roller coaster. Consistent. You got to know what them people are. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then you got to have to work at the core. Cause I'll be ready to give up on this shit sometimes, bro. Like, I ain't even gonna come to the studio the other day. Shit. Told you. Bro, they be seeing that shit in me when I don't see them myself. And that's, I feel like that's, that's helped me. That helped me a lot. I done got the best management team behind me, bro. Oh, my dude, dude, my dude. Dude. We gotta shut up. AMFK here. Appreciate it, man. Love. Shout out to my boy Brandon. Just came from Lebanon. I ain't never been out there. Yeah, it's, so going, it's, it's, going, it's going wild right now in South Lebanon. You're, you're a videographer, right? Yeah. And you yeah. also do management as well. Yes, and I started off with Lil Jeff and Lil School, and now we got Q50. He's the hottest in Chicago right now. How was it to watch their, uh, their come up and their grind? I don't need them. I just need a manager, so not even on over. You know what I'm saying? Before motherfuckers start rapping, before my dead ground, before I was been a lawyer from the jump. I'm like, right here, Jesus Christ. You guys were out in LA not that long. Ago, right? Just the summer. See? Yeah, yeah. Um, See, he the reason all of that shit. I was supposed to be out there, but we could do it. They had invited me out there, but I couldn't make it. Rest in peace, dude, man. Dude, always saw us a lot of love. Hey, when the time when I started, yeah, Jay, I'm out there. We had some shit coming too, bro. Oh my mom. Boy, that's another nigga, bro. My dad, nigga. Beef died. Niggas, I'm too deep up in the field, but I ain't Matt Ryan. Get no fuck, but that just goes so for you. The solid ass nigga calling my phone the other day, checking up on the nigga. Fuck, my dad, getting ready to go. Oh, my boy, though. It was a genuine guy. Do you know him? Do you know him? That was my nigga. Rest in peace, bro. Rest in peace, bro. Are you religious at all? I'm not religious. Yeah, 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 I'm not Fuck y'all. Just let him keep talking. Oh, fuck y'all. Oh, hey, keep going. Fuck y'all. Like I said again, fuck y'all. I read comments. Y'all yeah, y'all know me. I treat the fuck out y'all. Y'all say goofy shit. Oh, let's go. Oh, let's go. Oh, let's go. Lil Scoo may have passed away earlier this year, but his younger brother has started his own promising rap career, and we had the chance to speak with him. Yo, yo. What's the word? We're just listening to your music. It's just fire. Phone up. What's up? 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 What's up
Is there anything you want to say to the people about your uh, your brother's film or his legacy or anything? Shit, nigga, nine off. Fuck with my brother, music man. We on top right now, nigga. Fuck the time. Hell yeah. What are you dropping next? What, what can they look forward to coming from you? Shit, y'all got some shit coming so far from the drop some shit new. Look out. Man, just stay tuned though, for real, for real, for real. Yes, for someone who doesn't know about uh, you know, you and your friends and everyone who's been rapping, how would you describe? Your come up in the rap game. It's art. So like, I just be, I don't know. I, mean, I just, I just rap whatever I have. Them niggas is I'm saying, right? My music no, is so y'all be having fuck givers. They are no fuck givers. <coughs> My nigga, I'm gonna bust down, watch beat up, fucking creasy ass, <coughs> all black song. I think them is all black forces. I think just from the silhouette, and they gotta be because his man's next to him got them bitches on too. That was a title for that. We finna link with, we finna link with Brandon, we finna black up. Probably we're all black all the time, but nigga, to come outside with a buzz down, <coughs> watch with busting forces gang, you on different time then, brother. Fun with so, the shit, the music, this is not real. I'm not talking shit about you, I'm saying like, <coughs> you don't get no fuck, bro. You probably one of them. So, I mean, I'm just creative. People like to hear bad things and all that type of stuff. So, I, like, I just ride up. Mr. Wright, what going on in the right? You tell me. Spent till you get this, don't stop spinning. Fire alarm's going off right now. Can you rap to the fire alarm beat? Hey, got a block, got a stick, catch an op, he get hit. I want the game, that's the clip. This nigga's lame, they can't sit with my game. You can't hang, 50 shots, let it bang, ARP, you can't with the switch, I shoot the bitch, I don't know, you can't, I don't know, he fucking me up, he's Yeah, bird. After this, we spoke with Chicago legend, J. Bin Lot, one of the first members of the Bloodhounds that's been around the scene since Chief Keith and Lil Durk were first making a name for themselves. I was so just gonna say that, yeah. here with the one and only. Yeah, I know what I mean. Bro, niggas bounce out of a fire, nigga. You know you can. Mm. What's, what's been on your mind lately, man? What you been thinking about? Fuck, niggas. <coughs> Bloodhound better. When did your music first start really catching on? Like throw that, LA that, I did a like a rest of peace LA song and it went up the feedback was crazy. For those that didn't know, J.B. Bin Laden was close friends with Chicago drill originator L.A. Capone, who was tragically gunned down early on in his music career at only 17 years old. When did you meet Lil Jeff? I really like his big brother is my one of my best friends for sure. I know how since he was like really like six, seven then. What was he like growing up as a kid? I was a badass little kid, for real. He's a sneaky badass little kid, you know, bro. He'd be like, sneaky bad. Everything he did for real, he, like, he, he excelled in that shit. You got funny little Jeff stories? This one, he was a little kid. Maybe back then, we used to have a little socks shit, you know, bro, with Hooper, too. I uh, put his socks on, a little Hooper, a little Nike socks, no bitches was dead. Mad as hell, face red as hell. Yeah, that's some real little brother shit. Long that little Jeff, man. All that scone, man. Long live LA, man. Free for now, man. Fuck the ops. Next, we headed to Harold's to get some food before making our way to the <coughs> Everybody loves Harold's. Which Harold, ended bro. up being the location our future shooters would find us at. They love how I'm better. It's a better. You gotta stick together? Yeah. yeah. What's some stuff about, like, little Jeff that maybe people that wouldn't know? Shit, they don't know about my boy. Folks smile all day, every day. Now pay attention. Anytime you see a picture or a video of him, you're going to see him smile hard to see him. You think anything can be done to stop him? Yeah, you know, you know it's crazy? I can speak on that. <laughs> because, nigga, I literally, it's crazy as fuck you said that. I was literally saying that shit watching the videos. I said, <sighs> that nigga barely be smiling, bro. And, like, a lot of the music videos, if you watch them, he do be smiling. But in most of them, bro, he be dead face, still face, straight face. Nigga, in some of the videos, bro, the nigga is on his phone and checking his surroundings more than he rapping and paying attention to the song. He rapping parts of the song, but he checking his surroundings like, some, some, woo, woo, woo. Point at the camera and shit, but he not smiling at all. But most of the time when that nigga went live, you will know a nigga low key like got demons that they battling. But low key they spirit and their heart is low key good, bro, because how much they laugh and how much they smile. Not literally, cause some people be fucked up in here. 
So laughing and smiling don't always be always be signs of like <coughs> like courtesy and shit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it be signs of deviousness. And like you know, he had his devious ass ways. You feel me? He wanted to kill people. Dude, that's devious as fuck. He wanted to literally smoke you and see you fucking bleeding and go laugh about it and make songs about it. Like, but it's like deep down and sad. The nigga really just wanted to. Enjoy, laugh, smile, get bitches and shit if he could, but his environment really didn't allow him to do that because he was light skinned and him being light skinned, he had to prove himself ten times more, gang. Y'all can think that this shit's about color and all of that, but it's just real it's growing up as a as a black boy, I could literally tell you, bro, your color matters on how people look at you at first. You got to work a little harder. You might got to fight a little more coming up. To prove you ain't no bitch. Tell that story real quick and get back to the vid. That's almost done. We got five minutes anyway. You're not going to talk, but this is going to be long. So, we had a party. I think I told this before on stream. I mean, on, uh, on my videos. I don't know. Though. So, we had a party. Boom. It's me and my people, my cousin, and then my little brother. My little brother, light skin as fuck. Damn near pale as hell. During the time, we skinny as fuck. We ain't really got like no muscle and shit on us or nothing. You feel me? We just skinny little teenagers and shit. This nigga running around with blonde, yellowish hair and all types of shit. Yellow ass eyes, pale as hell. Just looking like one of them light skin niggas. Like, you feel me? He ain't dressed like one of them light skin niggas. He dressed like a normal. Like me, like we dressed the exact same type shit. But it's just a look. So we had a party. It's a group of niggas up in there just on pee time, bro. They on straight check time. They just checking people. They bored as hell walking through this party, bro. It's females, all type of shit. But they worried about running niggas' pockets, trying to fight niggas, trying to walk through and look at groups of niggas. And just stare to see who stare at them so they can just start something talking about some, what you looking at, what's up, what you want type shit. We watched this shit happen, nigga, for like the first hour or so at the party, bro. We watch a we watch a motherfucker pockets get ran, not even five feet in front of us, bro. Me and my cousin. They run a nigga pockets in front of his friends, bro. In front of his friends. He's standing there, he just not standing. Exactly with him. So it's like four, it's like four, five of them. They standing like this, like basically in a group, but he kind of like a thumb. He kind of like standing like this. So they walk up to him while they standing like this. Circle his ass. Get the walking up press to him, saying shit to him. And just tell his ass, oh yeah, what's up? We'll get the dig in his pocket, tell his ass, look away. Tell the nigga, if you look at me, we gonna beat your motherfucking ass. And if you gonna say anything, we gonna beat your ass. His friends this whole time, one of them peep it. Nigga, no bullshit. I'm watching. Now, I know y'all probably gonna say, like, nigga, why y'all ain't say nothing? Why y'all ain't get into it? Nigga, I ain't a Superman. We ain't a Superman. Like, I ain't the type to just sit and watch some shit happen. But in this case, we did. Because, nigga, at the end of the day... It's like five, six, seven of these niggas walking around bored as hell. And we right now ain't with our group. We just, it's just two of us. So we ain't no no bitch shit, but we like, nigga, we not gonna get included if niggas ain't trying us. If a nigga try us, that's different. The niggas gonna try us, they turn around, look at us, we look at them, they walk away. So that's why I'm saying, like, the niggas was picking and choosing who they was on. Because the niggas, we was by these niggas multiple times. They never once tried nothing with us until I go back. Minutes, however long later, nigga, now I'm standing next to my little brother. We standing behind, behind our people. Our people, they looking away, though, having a convo with some other motherfuckers in, like, a little booth-type situation next to us. Because we basically have, like, these booths, like, these weird-ass little booths or whatever. So, motherfuckers hopping around, talking and shit like that, you know, so motherfuckers back turn. But me and this nigga, I'm with him and shit like that the whole time. 
my back turned too. I'm talking to this nigga facing him like I'm facing y'all right now, and he is y'all looking at me. They right behind me type shit, you feel me? So then, boom, motherfucking, um, motherfucking, um, out of nowhere, nigga, I just get to hearing talking and shit like that with Dwight Bam. And then I just hear my little brother, like, so I turn around and I'm like, I'm bro, who y'all talking to? The nigga points around me and says, him. Fuck you talking about, we talking to you, nigga, what you looking at? We stand up, boom, getting a little back and forth with the niggas. Don't nothing happen, but this is what happened, actually. The nigga walks up. We standing there. We like, whoop through our bam, da 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 They standing so close, they could have took off from each other. The nigga does this, some weird-ass, zesty shit. He swipes my nigga lip. Or like his chin, like, literally just touches it, like. You sweet as hell, some, some, some. Bro, my nigga was finna, as soon as my nigga cocked back, finna bust him in the shit. One of my people bumped him hard as hell and jumped in front of his ass and got on do that. It's like, nigga, what's up? What you trying to do? Fuck you talking about, nigga, he with me. But our people, we with, mind you, they from the same, like, areas inside as these niggas. We from the paw, these niggas from the app. So my mans know these niggas, so he get on his on their ass because he be around these niggas. He, fuck is y'all alone? Fuck you talking about, ain't none of that. Woo woo. So... That shit end up, you know, whatever, don't nothing happen. But more of that story is like, nigga, just because my nigga was light-skinned, motherfucker had to go harder. You feel me? So that's the whole thing with Bloodhound Lil Jeff. Like, I feel like that's a part of his story type shit. Maybe. Nah, I don't know what the fuck I'll be doing. You know? I do these videos and people think like... Oh, you be like glorifying it or you're like making it worse, but I don't know what can be done. What could I do to make anything better realistically? Shit, positive shit. You put up positive shit. Is, it, is there any positive messages or shit you want to get out right now? Be yourself. Okay. Be yourself, man. You cost zero dollars to do that. Don't do drugs, too, bro. Yeah, don't do drugs. That's big. These are the final moments I filmed before we exited the recording studio and were met by six masked gunmen who emptied over 60 rounds at us at close range, injuring four people. The shooting happened right outside of studios. As a matter of fact, I want you to come take a look at this. One of the bullets pierced this door, and that's not the only one. We found a shell casing on the sidewalk, the same sidewalk where four men were shot. One of which was my cameraman named Matt, who among all of the chaos of being struck in the jugular by a bullet, actually picked up the camera and began filming his immediate reactions to being shot. <sighs> Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Holy shit. Yeah. <sighs> Holy fuck. <sighs> Yo, I hope Brady's okay. Guys. <sighs> Holy shit. Guys. They just shot. They just shot making my body weak, gang. A lot of shots. I didn't get hit. I don't think so. I'm okay. And you got hit in his mouth. I'm in a dumpster. That shit just literally made my body like. Holy shit. Holy fuck. I busted my knee and my hand. Well, there's blood all over me. Did I get hit? Or is that my hand? Did I get hit? Oh fuck, did I get hit? Did I get hit? Oh, I got hit. Okay. Okay. I gotta call somebody. I'm going to call 911. I don't got a weak stomach gang. It should be the same shit, cause like. Holy shit. Growing up in the hood, bro, like, this is the shit that you be risking that I do not want to go through. And my, nigga, my this people got shot and shit. And that shit just... I don't know how to react. It got my body uh, just, like... I think it was just a graze. Like, I don't know, gang. Like, I could, it's I like I can feel it. My, like... Bro, my girlfriend's going to be so mad at me. I love you so much. Holy shit. I need to hide behind the dumpster or something, bro. I can't be out here. I don't know what I'm doing. I hope I'm okay. I really fucking hope I'm okay, guys. 
Uh, I remember the pull the micro audio. Yeah, so check it out. Cameraman never dies. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah my damn neck just started. That whole time Matt was recording, he unknowingly had a 9mm bullet fragment lodged in his jaw. Then the police arrived, and we captured my initial interactions with them as Matt was being taken off in the ambulance. Were they shooting at you? I have no idea what happened to her. I have no idea what happened to her. Uh, Man, they let you no keep your camera, though? Came out of the camera. That's crazy, though, because you know, like, nigga, they be... Uh, we need to talk to him. Started hearing gunshots. All I heard was gunshots. Yeah. You were in, right? I don't remember. I don't. I do not remember where we were. I didn't see anyone. I don't know what anyone looks like. And uh, yeah. So as you can see, I refuse to cooperate with police. And while some fools on the internet, like academics, are asking me if I'm gonna go get revenge for my cameraman, I don't gotta say nothing. You probably know who was responsible for doing it. Are you gonna go spin? Yeah, I'm not going to be spinning any blocks or getting any violent revenge on the people who tried to kill us. See, I told you, bro. What I will do is ask you guys to take one minute out of your day to subscribe to the channel of my cameraman, Matt, called Acti. He's been with me since the start and actually filmed the first ever episode of The Buckingham Show. So I'm hoping that some of y'all will subscribe to him, show him some support, and watch a few of his videos. While not cooperating with police or getting vengeance of any kind may seem dumb to some of you, Matt and I really don't want to perpetuate the cycle of suffering and violence in any kind and only wish to continue filming our videos and documenting different walks of life from Lebanon to Canada to the streets of Chicago. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Thank God we are alive. And please consider taking a minute out of your time to check out the channel of my cameraman, Matt. I think he really deserves it. I'm so sorry, Matt, bro. I, I love you, bro. I love you too, Brandon. I want everyone to know also that I've already forgiven Brandon legitimately. This was obviously not Brandon's intentions or anything. He would have, if he was in control of anything, it, none of this would have happened. So this was not I love him. up to him. I love him too. On Miro, teams work faster on the new Innovation Workspace. Innovation. That shit is crazy. Damn, I got hella videos that I think about it. I got this shit. I, was, I did this reaction to this damn. What you call shit? This damn KSI shit. I'm reacting to motherfuckers reacting to this song. That shit gonna be long as hell, but this shit ain't gonna be too long. But yeah, you know, I ain't got too much to really say. I just wanted to do the little reaction, you know what I'm saying? I said basically what I have to say, you know. You just gotta pretty much, I say this, you just gotta pretty much be careful as hell when you trying to do these hood vlogs. That's why, that's why, like me, I've thought about it, like, doing hood, hood vlogs, even potentially interviewing niggas, you know what I'm saying? Up here, it's like, it's somewhat best be like that, how it is in a lot of other places where it's treacherous as hell. It's like, give or take, you might have, might not have to worry about who you interact with, but, like, cameramans up here usually are like seen as like white flag symbols like people up here be really wanting to be seen more so and heard more so so like most of the time most people even if they come from a gruesome group of niggas they literally show the cameraman love and they don't do no shiesty shit but some niggas do shice the cameramans out at weird as hell with payments and try to force niggas to accept certain shit and you know what I'm saying? That shit do be taking place. I'm not going to act like it don't, but I really don't know how common it is because one, like I said, I got my my guy brother who I made a cameraman and he is in shot for multiple niggas from both sides and different sides and shit like that and all around it. He, you know what I'm saying? They really made a complaint about like the payments. He even said a couple of things, but he ain't really complain too much. You know what I'm saying? So he ain't never made no complaint about nobody trying him. Nobody trying to get on no weird shit with him because I ask him all the time. I used to ask him all the time. Like, anybody get on weird shit with you, bro? Anybody try you, bro? Let me know. Like, he, he got you. Like, but I ain't gonna lie, bro. I be good. Motherfuckers actually be treating me with love. Like, he be feeling separate shit. So I go, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yeah. Most of the time up here, you be a cameraman. Motherfuckers gonna fuck with you. Even if you kind of worry about, like, if you got to worry about how you maneuver. Even if you come from being around certain groups of niggas and a certain lifestyle or whatever the fuck, you pick a camera up and start just working, chill, stay out the way, and really just don't get involved in all the street politics and shit like that, you'll be able to start expanding and working with different people that you probably never thought to see yourself around, because I've been around a few motherfuckers. 
where I don't really know if they were like fucking with being around me. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna say it. like they fucked with being around me, but it was, ain't no issue happen or nothing. You know what I'm saying? I was cool, I was cordial. They was cool, they was cordial. You know what I'm saying? But I can't say like they actually like appreciated my presence or even like that shit at all. You know what I'm saying? That that ass. You know what I'm saying? And it might be like that, but it's like, bro, I'm. You see what I'm doing. I'm here working. You know what I'm saying? Right? I'm working with one of your people or working for you or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just working, gang. So it's like, whatever you see me with or know me to be with or whatever, like, don't even see that or don't even think of that. See me for how you see me right now. Me being myself, gang. I'm myself. That's why I am. Nigga, I'm me. Nigga, I'm not whatever the fuck. Even if I got all different shit that symbolize me that I say, whatever, at the end of the day, that really don't matter because I'm just me. You feel me? So when I walk in the room, I step in the room, see me as me. Don't see me as, oh, that's dude who be with them or that's the dude who I done seen with them or like, nah, that shit don't matter because whatever y'all got going on, that shit ain't got nothing to do with me. I just be with them, you know what I'm saying? Because they cool people just like you probably cool people too because I'm cool people, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to get involved in none of that. I ain't trying to Hang out with everybody and get involved in nothing, you know what I'm saying? Where motherfuckers look like that nigga beside choosing, he beside hopping. I don't do none of that, bro. I just be cool with everybody, like, and shit, and I just stay to myself. You feel me? So, that's your best bet when it comes to doing all of this shit, bro. It's really just trying to, like, stay in your lane. And Brandon do that. He do that. So, it's like, motherfuckers constantly trying to get on, bro, and come at, bro, and shit like that. It's like, motherfuckers need to get off his dick, because at the end of the day, bro, like, he do do what he's supposed to do, bro. And he does stand his lane. He just like going to the hoods and shit. You know what I'm saying? And getting active with the guys. And getting active with us. Our, our type. And actually getting active. You know what I'm saying? Like, shout out Tommy G. But you know, Tommy G got his lane. But Brandon like shit. I'm finna actually like try to get to know y'all. Get to know y'all. Like, you could up and show the guns. You could do all of this and whatever the fuck and everything. But I ain't even looking at that. Who is you as a person besides all of that? Because you only like this because of a reason. You know what I'm saying? As far as like the street shit and whatever you got going on. But scratch that. When you not actually just worried about this, what actual person is you? What type of fun, enjoying person is you? I know you ain't just sitting here boring and shit. Some of them do be boring. Some of them niggas just be living that normal, boring day-to-day -day life, nigga. Where they just sit there, boom, wake up. Smoke, get high, and damn near just fucking, and maybe his stains and shit, whatever the fuck, all that, all day, just, you know how many fucking videos I nigga got niggas and motherfuckers in the background all around up in the video, it's like, the fuck, and some of them probably don't even be off of drugs, some of them, most of them do though, like, this youth now, bro, like, most of them is all off drugs. But some of them might not be, and they might just be tired as hell from staying up, get high all day, just literally trying to stay on pivot and not even really going to sleep. The only time they go to sleep is when they pass out because they've been up so long trying to be aware. You know what I'm saying? All of that shit plays part, bro. I could go all day on this shit, but I don't want to make no hour-long video. This shit already passed 30 minutes, and I know it is. I'm finna look before I even end it. Oh, God. But... Yeah, man, you already know what the fuck going on. It's your boy, Mr. Sitchi, in the bill. Keep them likes coming. Keep them subscribes coming. And we're going to get over to y'all. Yeah, Zersky. Oh, yeah. How long is this motherfucker? Bro, 52 minutes is crazy. Higher than that bitch, I'm off the oil, they don't get it up uh, Running up my money, I'm getting my money I'm talking my chicken, hold up bitch Be talking that shit, but hard time told that bitch to listen